Hello folks, Franklin here with a little note about the audio quality in this episode of my blog. Unfortunately, due to a microphone malfunction, which I did not notice until I had left the workroom and sat down to do the edits, the sound quality is pretty poor in this particular instance, certainly not up to my usual standards. So if it's too bad for you to listen to, never fear, there will be more with better audio coming along very soon. Thanks for your patience and your understanding. Hey all, nice to be back. I hope that your week was good. Mine has been a little bit frustrating. I have spent a great deal more time in bed, confined to bed, following doctor's orders as uh, my recovery from uh, being just a touch exhausted, uh, it turns out it wasn't as complete as I thought it was, but uh, nothing grave. Just, uh, again, annoying. Although I will say this, if you are going to be confined to bed and told to keep still, it's nice if things that you love, like knitting, for example, uh, are things that you can do while you are in bed holding mostly still. i uh, been very, very glad this week that I didn't decide to pursue, I, you know, for example, uh, the chainsaw carving um, as, as my passion in life, because that would be more difficult to do in bed, um, at least without getting sawdust all over the sheets, and that, that would be even more annoying. You know, that's going to be worse than cracker crumbs. Does anybody have trouble with sawdust between the sheets? I mean, maybe you live with a lumberjack or something like that. If you live with a lumberjack, I have lots of questions I'd like to ask you about, actually, but um, that's another topic for another video. So, yep, so, but as you can see, I am upright. I am back at the workroom. Um, I am at work on the sweater, the first of the two sweaters. This is the top-down saddle shoulder. I've had to practice saying that, by the way, so that I don't stumble over it every time. The top-down saddle shoulder that I have been talking about for the last couple of videos, at least. This is the first one, the plain one, the heavier weight one that I am using because I had not used this construction before. And now that I have had a chance to work with this construction, I'm going to go ahead and recommend it because I found it to be very satisfactory. I'll put a link down below. Um, the, the name of the website that I'm using is, um, is franco.com, not spelled in an intuitive way, um, spelled like this. Um, and uh, franco.com, interestingly enough, uh, was uh, programmed, put together, is run by um, a fellow named Frank, who um, is friends with many friends of mine and uh, is someone that I've also had the pleasure of meeting. He even came and took a class with me um, at Stitches West. And you know what? I got to say, I am really enjoying the way his website works. It's a, a personal project. It's a little quirky here and there, but I followed the instructions and sat down feeling a little bit nervous about how things were going to go. But once I got through basically the shaping of the top of the sweater, once I had worked from the neck opening and then through the uh, solder See, I knew I was going to do it. The shoulder saddles, here the shoulder saddles, and just a little bit way down where I joined everything into the round to work, I got awfully curious about how this was going. How were things really measuring up in terms of the look and the fit as opposed to you know what, what uh, I had been given in theory um, by using franco.com's website to generate a custom fit pattern for myself. So I did something that I really like to do when I'm midway through a project that needs a good evaluation. I took the work in progress off of the needles where it was all bunched up because the needles are not as big around as the, the, the piece in progress is. I, I slipped them off the needles very carefully onto a nice stout long piece of scrap yarn and then I was able to try a fit on my male dress form and my male dress form was not made to my measurements specifically but by great good fortune this um, this rather battered thing that I found at a resale shop for an awfully good price uh, does happen to have the same measurements in the torso that I do, except this guy's taller and narrower at the bottom. But when we're talking about the chest and the shoulders, he's pretty much the same size. So I 
put it on and I was just tickled to pieces. I mean, did that little dance that you do and you're like, well, it's working. It's not just working in theory, it's working for real. I like the way it looks and I like the way it fits. I uh, could not have been more delighted. And so after that, I very swiftly got everything carefully back on the needles and continued to motor on down. And at this point, um, I am uh, now well below the uh, opening for what will be the sleeves. And I am, the only thing that I'm doing, the only change that I'm making that is not explicitly prescribed by my pattern from Franco.com is that I am putting some very gentle body shaping into my sweater because you may have heard that men's sweaters don't need body shaping because men are cylinders, but we're not cylinders. We really are not cylinders. Some of us get larger at the waist, some of us get narrower at the waist, but most of us have something that changes between the neck and the waist. Um, and so a little body shaping to take that into account to give us the nicest possible silhouette, that's useful. So I'm putting that in. Um, and body shaping is suggested in the Franco pattern. It's just not explicitly laid out for you. He uh, has some suggestions and then you make your decisions based on what you want. So I'm doing that. Otherwise, it's the Franco pattern. And I'm, I'm reaching a point now where as I, as I motor down the torso, which will not be very long because I am very short, um, something I'm always happy about when I'm knitting a sweater for myself. Uh, I want to do another try on. I'm going to slip it back onto the needles and, and see how it's looking at this point. So, so this has been a really, really pleasant um, and soothing, comforting project to be working on. And um, I should mention that um, Franco.com is not a sponsor. Uh, I, I paid for my patterns um, and uh, am happy that I did so. But now that I've had a chance to test it, I feel comfortable putting it out there and uh, in case anyone else would like to go see what it's about. It is uh, very well supported, I will say. Um, before you buy anything, do what Frank suggests you do and sit down and watch the video that's right there at the opening to the website where he describes how it works. Um, yeah, so I've been working on that. And then the other soothing needlework that I've been doing has been mending. I have been doing the periodic maintenance that is required on the most precious possessions that belong to Rosamond, who, if you are new, if you are just turning in, tuning in, she is my little blue nose pit bull. And she is very attached to, in particular, uh, the blanket that goes in her bed and to particularly her pink bunny. And I'll put up a picture here of, of Rosamond with Pink Bunny. And Pink Bunny is especially precious because Pink Bunny is the only thing that has been with Rosamond through her whole life. By the time she came to our household, we were her fifth living situation and she was just past six months old. And um, her early life was not at all pleasant. Um, uh, when she was removed from not her birth home, but the first home after that, after she was sold on Craigslist at far too early an age, um, when she was removed from a home that was being broken up because of domestic violence, um, the police took the mother and the baby, and then at the mother's request, they also took Rosamond. And Rosamond um, was not able to stay with the mother and the baby, but she was sent to a high kill shelter and just barely escaped the high kill shelter um, when she was rescued by a wonderful uh, Chicago area foster group. And she went from the original home to the, foster, to the, the shelter and then to the foster home with Pink Bunny and she loves to cuddle with Pink Bunny, and she loves to, um, to suck on Pink Bunny, rather as though Pink Bunny were a mother figure. It's something that she, she does to comfort herself sometimes, I really do believe. I think um, that's why she does it. And it's uh, important to me, therefore, that Pink Bunny last as long as Pink Bunny possibly can. So about once a month, Pink Bunny gets a going over. I check to see if there are uh, rips or tears or if previous mends have opened up. And 
sit down and uh, do a bunch of sewing up. I I will uh, restuff as needed. I try to reuse stuffing that has either come out of Pink Bunny or that has come out of other toys that have uh, have ended their useful life. And then I sew Pink Bunny up. And then when she's nice and secure again, uh, we uh, do a long soak uh, to loosen up the grime that accumulates when you get sucked on uh, every day, a couple times a day by a, by a, a happy little pit bull. And uh, after that, uh, Pink Bunny goes for an extremely gentle limited wash in the washing machine and then dries out. And when she's all dried out um, and fluffy and as pretty as can be, uh, she is given back to her owner. And, you know, she'll, she'll never be as pink as she once was, um, because she was very pink. She was, um, you couldn't even call it shopping pink. It was just, it was disgusting pink because Pink Bunny um, looks to be the kind of toy that you would get at a very inexpensive carnival. Uh, we love her nonetheless for that, but even so, that's the color pink that she was. Um, but she has now been really thoroughly loved by Rosamond. And uh, it's like, it's rather, as was written in The Velveteen Rabbit, that, you know, you, the wear is signs of love. Although I will say where people are concerned, I, I take issue slightly with the Velveteen Rabbit's point of view, but that is a topic for another vlog where maybe I'll flap my jaws about the Velveteen Rabbit and the Giving Tree and a few other pillars of children's literature with which I have issues. Um, but that's not what I was talking about. I was talking about Pink Bunny and Rosamond, and uh, Rosamond was very, very uh, concerned, as she always is, while I was doing the repairs. She likes to sit and watch close up while I do the surgery, and I don't like her. If my best friend was undergoing surgery, I would want to be nearby to offer comfort and support as well. And uh, so uh, after the wash, she was uh, they were reunited, the happy pair, and, um, and Rosamond got right back down to business with Pink Bunny, and it's it's very sweet to see. The other thing that I need to work on is her blankie, but uh, haven't had a chance to do that yet. And um, I guess I'll talk about that in the next vlog. So for now, I would just like to say thank you for tuning in. It is so nice to be sitting upright in a chair, but before I sit upright in a chair too much, I am going to bid you a fond farewell. Hope that you have a good week and look forward to seeing you again in, I hope, not too terribly long a time. So until that time, be good to yourselves, be good to everyone else, um, and I will look forward to seeing you again soon with perhaps even an entire sweater torso to show for it. So, all right. See you later. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel so you'll be the first to know about future episodes. Click like or leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts. And if you really, really liked what you saw, check out my Patreon campaign, where my patrons enjoy exclusive access to downloads, live streams, and other bonus material every week.